Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys have had a wonderful week and um, I've had a busy week and I'm just catching up. Um, just to sit down and shoot this video, gosh. Um, outside of that, it's just been like absolutely just yeah, amazingly busy with projects and household duties of mom and wife and um, kids, whatnot. Um, so I'm happy to have you back. If you haven't already though, please go ahead and click the like button and subscribe to this channel. And after this video is finished, go ahead and share this with your family, your friends, and all your artists, um, peeps that you think would actually benefit from this video and help them out. Um, what we're going to be doing today, I am going to show you how to paint like a master and procreate. Um, taking all of your craftsmanship and methodologies and techniques that you usually would uh, um, use for doing traditional painting, traditional drawing, whatnot, with oils or acrylics, and you're going to just transition those into the Procreate program and use those same materials, methodologies, and um, skills and techniques. Um, coming, you know, painting like, you know, Rembrandt, Caravaggio, my personal living master, Odd Nerdrum, who happens to be from Norway, amazing artist, painter, please check him out. I have a link right below in the description box. We're going to be doing and showing you just how to just um, get really comfortable with your brushes and your your texture, whatnot, and have it coming looking like very luminous and rich and um, just vibrant. Also as well, I started an art newsletter um, and if you see, go back, go into my description box and you will see that I um, have an art newsletter just in case um, something supposedly happens to YouTube, which I hope it doesn't, um, we'll still be able to be connected and I'll be able, you'll be able to, sh uh, to see what I'm up to um, with my projects. Um, upcoming projects, things that I'm working on, la da dee, la da da, whatnot, and um, that would mostly be happening through like email and even through my website, um, which is also you can find that link down below in the description box. Without further ado, uh, let's get rolling and let's get started in how to paint like a master in procreate. All right, let's go. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the tutorial. Um, before we begin, um, I just wanted to actually just to kind of name out the listings of brushes and the five steps that we're gonna cover in this tutorial of, of painting like a master. So these are our five levels of um, going into this um, painting. Um, our five stages is our body sculpt. Number one, number two is tackling the general form. Three, um, building shades and tones. Number four, glazing. And number five, specifics and details. And the brushes that we're going to be using for this painting is going to be our painting brush. Out of the painting tab, if you go to the, uh, these are the tabs in your brushes. So in the, under the painting tab, oil paint, dry brush, old brush. Under the luminance tab, it's light brush. Um, organic tab is cotton, the touch-up tab, flowing hair, short hair, and fine hair. So, and these um, actually will be listed down below in the description box if I went too fast for you. So, as you can see here, the first um, stage of our painting that we're into is our body sculpting. Within the first 10 minutes of you painting, you're um, in, yeah, you're going to get the general form down within the first 10 minutes. That is your goal. That is your initial goal, is getting the general form of everything down within the first 10 minutes. Um, you are um, body sculpting. You are um, building a scaffolding, getting everything situated, your head, um, the shoulders, the arms, everything is gonna be well proportioned in perspective to um, your, from the relation distance between your head and your shoulders, whatnot. This is very important. You're not gonna go straight into doing the eyes, straight into all the details. No, no, no. Um, you're gonna get lost. So you are building a scaffolding. You are building your, um, your building, um, your first foundation, which is your basement, to your anatomical form. 
and this is very important. You're going to get this done within the first 10 minutes. And after that is you, that, that's, I mean, you're getting the hard, this is actually the harder part to the drawing because if all else, fa I mean, if this fails, if you have to do a, just a really poor scaffolding in general form building, your drawings is completely going to fall apart. Just how it would if you, you know, if you have no bones, your body's just going to collapse and just be like a little, like an earthworm. That's how it works. Now, going into our second stage, we're tackling the general form. So body sculpt is the first stage. You're sculpting the body with your scaffolding. You're just scaffolding it. Now we're going to get into the more of the tackling the general form. That is putting thing, everything into perspective of where your, how your nose looks according to your photo reference. How's your ear? How far is the ear from the nose? Your cheek, where is the, your eye glance, um, the direction of the eyes, where is that in um, relation to um, your, your eyes in relation to your chin? This is really important. <laughs> So this, we're still within the first 10 minutes or maybe the latter 10 minutes of um, the drawing since you first started. But this is actually, you're really fine tuning your general form, um, your scaffolding process. Um, you are, your basement, you're just finalizing your basement. You're finalizing the concrete, whatnot, because, um, and this is the time where you are going to pay close attention. You're going to pay close attention to, um, you're going to, um, you're sitting close to your drawing, but there are moments, um, that you're going to be walking away from your drawing and standing back and looking f five, six feet back, um, at your drawing. You're getting a perspective of looking close macro minimal, macro to minimal, macro to minimal, macro to minimal. And um, you are just really getting that nose the way it's supposed to look according to your photo reference. You're getting your eyes, the eye sockets um, are going, or you are just p positioning your eyes, your eye pupils into your eye sockets the way that it looks in the photo, photo reference, because if, if something is off a little bit is off here it's just going to it's yeah it's going to make you know everything else look warped unnatural um and unrealistic and we don't want that because this is a realistic uh, painting it's a realistic drawing um now i will tell you um in and for example rembrandt when he would first start building his paintings he actually, uh, getting the general form down, he was taking a palette knife, <laughs> palette knife, and he was placing the paint onto the surface of the canvas. And he was building the form that way, um, like, a, like a sculpture, just taking the clay and just um, putting strips of the clay. I don't know if you've ever done sculpture before, but, um, or a bust of a sculpture. And you're taking strips of clay and you're just kind of layering it in a kind of very, in a rough, in a, with a rough type of approach, but you're getting like, this rough, you're, you are, you're at the bare bones of the drawing because you have to have a very strong bare bone um, drawing before you can have a very well represented painting. And so when you look at Rembrandt's, the finished products of his paintings, and you look at the luminosity and the transparency of it, you're able just to see like under hundreds, I mean, I mean, yeah, most likely hundreds of layers <laughs> of like painting, of glazed painting and all these luminous, beautiful, rich colors that from the foundation all the way to the very end of what made that painting be. And the reason why that is because it's a very strong, very strong scaffolding. So 
Um, same way, and I would say Odd Nerdrum, who is a um, live living master that's in a Norwegian um, painter. He is like the Rembrandt, I guess you can say he's a Rembrandt equivalent of, he's a Rembrandt modern painter, and he uses the same t technique as Rembrandt. And he, he paints much larger, like 10 to 12 feet paintings, and they're absolutely stunning. Now, as we're ending up the, um, the stage of the general form, we're going into the um, building shades and tones stage, our third stage. Now, with the um, third stage of the building shades and tones, um, I'm, I'm taking out my, um, I'm gonna, I'm using my dry brush and my old brush um, a lot, and that's creating a, um, a scaffolding of texture. I am using my oil paint. I, I, I forgot to tell you that when I first started, like, you know, just kind of scaffolding on the skin, the like the underlaying of the skin for the first stage, I was using a lot of the oil paint brush um, along with my um, dry brush and old, old brush. But here at the my shades and tones stage, I am building a lot of the, the using the dry and old brush. And that is creating a texture, um, a nice textured um, of the skin. You know, it kind of gives like an indication of pores, that sort of thing. So with this brush, with the dry and the old brush, I'm able to create like a tactile type of skin texture that it just makes it, just really makes the skin pop. It makes the colors pop and it gives it this this very tactile type of surface and i'm going to continue doing and using this the old and the dry brush along with my oil paint brush and glaze um glazes um just in repetition until i reach my fifth stage and this is just something that you you're going to be able just to, it's a trial and error, basically. There's no right or wrong way about it. It's just that you're looking at your photo reference and you're taking, you're taking your oil paint dry brush and your oil old brush and you're just like using it in, um, <sighs> You're pretty much amalgamating the three, and you're using it in, in, in harmonious unison, and um, seeing what you're getting, and um, give away, take away, give away, take away, and it's just a harmonious um, tool of these brushes that you're using together to see what happens and what you get, and um, you're going to be doing this for you know, it, it, it's actually. And this is something where we, I think a lot of times we question ourselves as artists and sometimes we can doubt ourselves um, that, and this is what, 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 when you start doubting yourself and questioning yourself at this point in the painting, like, oh my gosh, the, these, this color is a little bit too garish um, or it's just too bright or it doesn't look realistic enough, you know? And um, one of the things that you can do um, to help you with that is by just walking away from the painting and looking at it from a distance walking away from the bidding walking and looking for a distance um, working on it a little bit walking away from it from a distance um and really taking the time to look at the photo reference um like maybe don't draw for five minutes and looking at the photo reference like clearly and um looking at uh, stepping back from the photo reference and doing the same deal, looking at it from a um, six foot distance. Um, yes, and um, it, like I said, you know, it's going to be a natural <laughs> thing to doubt yourself and just to question what, how, where you're going as an artist with this, when you're painting, um, especially since, you know, if you're a traditional um, painter and like, Procreate is a very new um, tool for you um, as an artist. It all comes with trial and error and it's practice. Um, the fourth stage that we're going to go into 
is the gla is glazing, 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 glazing. So you're going to have, um, you're going to pick up some more brushes during the stage. I mean, you're going to pick up your, um, your light brush, um, on, uh, cotton, flowing hair, short hair, and fine hair brush. And um, it's all about glazing from this point, guys. It's all about glazing. So it is all about glazing, guys. This is all about glazing. With the brushes that I've started out with, my oil dry brush and old old brush, I'm not, I don't ever put these down. I mean, I'm, I'm using my oil dry and old brush throughout the whole entire duration point um, of my my stages from my from the beginning of my first stage to the, to the very last fifth stage and um, along the way I am adding brushes like my my light my luminous brush um, my cotton and of course my touch-up brushes because um, even when if you're not at the fifth stage of your painting um, you're not going, I mean, you're going to start using those, your hair and touch up brushes, um, most definitely in the early parts of the, um, fourth stage, which is your glazing. And you're going to be tossing back and forth because you're going to be using, um, your short hair brush for your eyebrows. Um, if you're actually, um, drawing beards, mustaches, stubble for men's hair. So during the glazing process, it's a combination of all of these brushes together. And you're just kind of tossing back and forth, tossing back and forth, tossing back and forth until, like I said before, until you get the result that you want, that you see that you have come to a place where, oh, wow, it's, 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 it's tactile. It's, it's like, it's almost the mirror image or it's 90 five percent the mirror image of that of the photo um this realistic take of luminosity um the illumination brush my light brush that i do use um i will tell you that i start using that brush in the second stage and i go all the way up into the fifth stage and um but when i first start using my light brush it's very subtle Yes, so my light brush is very subtle when I first start using it in the second stage. And then as I uh, progress to the third, to the fourth, to the fifth, it just, um, it does, I, I pick up a little bit more um, light and more uh, opaqueness um, to the, um, to my highlight um, areas. Um, and I'm just not leaving the highlight there to my highlight areas. I really want to create some tactileness of skin texture to my highlight areas as well. So it's just not this like big spotlight like on the forehead, as you can see, or the cheek area. There is some um, under um, there's some skin texture that is harmonious with that um, those areas of light, and um, that's those are just extra little tips and tidbits that you pick up along the way and that you uh, it's a self-discovery and an exploration of what you find out along the way um, through trial and error um, as you progress into your painting now um like i said before when i was talking about the the flowing that your hair brushes um you, you could like i said start using those in the second stage um, don't be afraid to not use them. And um, it, it is a, like I said, a trial and error. You know, you are building, progressing. You are looking to see what's going to aesthetically pleasing and that sort of thing. So this, um, we're coming to the end of our tutorial. Um, I know this is a short one. I will be putting out a longer tutorial on um, Skillshare and I will be letting you know about that. Look um, to forward to that in my art newsletter. Um, and so um, we'll be talking more about that later. Um, so I really wanna thank you so much for stopping by and I hope this um, video has helped you so much. Um, 
please share this video um, to people, to your art friends, whatnot, anyone who think they can get like benefit from this video. Um, this is just a glimpse into um, painting a, um, a portrait like a master. And um, I look forward to seeing you soon for the next video. Have a great week and be blessed. Bye.